This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, 99cent.com with code MMA Nuts 99. Save 30% off new orders with code MMA Nuts 30. Butcher Box, get grass fed meats delivered to your house. Get $10 off with code MMA Nuts. Join, save, smile, save 15% off, plus one month free with code MMA15 at dentalplans.com. Freshly, first time users get 20 bucks off the six meal plan with code GWN639. The Fence Soap, used by more champions in more countries than any other brand. Save 15% off with code MMA Nuts. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts episode 335. 335! Let's bring the heat. My name is Ingo Weigel. Back with us, MMA Show. By my fans, for my fans, we're live live, between serious and ridiculous. Yes, sir. Zero to 103. Like that. Just blasting off into oblivion? Yeah. Hey, last week I forgot, or the week before, I forgot to tell a vasectomy story. Okay. Remember? Yes. <laughs> so I got a vasectomy the other day. Should I get one? Yeah, definitely. Right, I think it's good stuff. <laughs> and uh, people are asking, I have this super hot nurse, probably like 25, and a doctor mm-hmm. asking what I do for a living. I'm like, oh, I do a podcast. You know, it's about MMA. The nurse is like, really? I'm like, I'm a big fan. I train MMA. I'm doing wrestling, jujitsu. And, and the doc's like, talk about MMA. He knows MMA's. <laughs> he knows and the we're MMA's. And like, we're all talking about, like, hey, who's your favorite fighter? I'm like, I like a little Mark Hunt. Nurse is like, oh, I like a little Chuck Liddell. And like, <laughs> wow. like, we're having this crazy conversation while everyone's fucking working on my business. Okay. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like... And I'm trying, and it gets to those awkward points where I'm saying funny shit and I'm making them laugh, but I don't want to make them laugh too hard because I don't want them to fuck up. Mm-hmm. It's possible. So Could happen. You want to be gentle when they're playing. Yeah, guns. <laughs> everything to... went well, but it, it's just <laughs> like this is uh, the weirdest experience ever. Of like, it, it may have been a ten-minute procedure, felt like an hour, but we're having this crazy in-depth discussion about MMA. And you said there was smoke at some point. <laughs> oh yeah, they're just burning shit off. Ball balls are uh, burning away. How big was the needle they used to numb I your shit? I didn't look. <laughs> it didn't feel pleasant. That shit hurt. Fuck yeah. that. I mean, you got to get it done, but, man, wow. really weird, really awkward. You put peas on your balls? Fuck yeah. <laughs> half hour on, half hour off okay. for like a whole weekend. You just buy a whole get bunch of Get it done on Friday. Costco style. Cha-ching. Yeah. 20 pound bag. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <Throwing out there. laughs> oh, man. It's, it's it no is. bueno. No. But you're all better now. Yeah. It was a couple weeks. One week, no sex. <laughs> yeah, I stuck right to that plan. I'm Good for you, Matt. Anyway. All right, Talk about the cards. We missed some cards over the week. Yeah. We've been off for a couple weeks. So I want to talk about that uh, card that happened the other day. We had that Rose Namajunas mm-hmm. defeating Michelle Watterson. Yeah. Rear naked choke. Ah. We had that one go on. Mm-hmm. We had Jacare versus Robert Whitaker in that really awkward match that we thought, why are we making this matchup? Mm-hmm. And then well, Whitaker goes and... Uh, Knocks out the Jacare. He does. Unexpected. And I want to ask you, because I know the night before, Jacare signed another eight, like a crazy contract again. Eight fight contract uh-huh. with the UFC. Was super happy. Did he lost? Did he lose focus for this fight? Uh, well, no, because his training camp was well before that. But I, I want to say... I don't know. Maybe he just partied just a little, or, <laughs> or maybe you know who knows. Or is Robert Whitaker that good? Well, That's the guy. The other well, yeah, he's he's one of those like uh, journeyman guys who is not quite a superstar, but he's definitely skilled. He's got a lot of power, as he's proven. And you can't really mess with the guy. He's technically sound. I I, I feel like we hmm. just Tico Brunson now the same to Jacare. and yep. I, I think he was on like a seven fight yep. win streak. Yeah, I mean. That's MMA. It's what sucks is you run into somebody sometimes that has your number. Yeah. Whether it's just a style difference or you know a specific way you you approach that fight or the way that guy approaches fighting you, and you're kind of screwed. I mean, look at you know BJ Penn, Frankie Edgar comes to mind. <laughs> just like running into once, a, twice, three times. Brick you know? wall. It just just keep sure. running it back. You know, it just kind of it just happens. So, and the other question for Jacare, you know, he's such a wizard on the ground again. And I think we compare it to the George Gurgel syndrome, yes. where I like it, the stand-up, yes, but when I does. knock a fool out, why does he refuse to use the jiu-jitsu when you know that's where he has the advantage? Oh, because he's a proud man. <laughs> <laughs> stand up Yes, it's more exciting. Oh. He does have decent stand-up. I mean, you can't fault the guy on that, but... Well, he's got power, but I mean, he wasn't mixing anything up. Just... No. And I, you know, 
you should kind of look at the Damian Maya when he tried that, right? He went to try to stand up game for a little while and then said, you know what? The ground is my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. That's where I need to be. And that's, yeah. I think, what Jacare needs to get back to because I think he's getting too hungry with the knockouts. And maybe that was a little bit of Fabrizio Verdum, too. Again, yep. like loving the Muay Thai and then yep. it's a taste of knocking people out. And, of course, the fans love that more, yeah. I think. But it's more exciting. But why, why not win where you're the best? I mean, clearly no one in that division is going to be anywhere near him. It's him and Damian Maya, those two guys, in, in, in all of MMA. So it, it does seem cra crazy for him to play stand-up when he's yes. got the best ground game in the business, perhaps. I, I think in any given night, one of those guys can beat each other. It's not like, yeah. you know, it wouldn't... Uh, I mean, maybe that's what it was, it was expected. <laughs> so he's like, everyone thinks it's I'm going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do the stand-up thing because no one expects that. Yeah, you attack a man <laughs> at his strength. That's right. You come through the front door. That's that is a strategy. <laughs> I was I just watched that movie uh, Ready to Rumble and that's what they were talking oh. about. That's where it comes from. Okay. Tag man straight. Okay. Who else? Demetrius Johnson got another win. Ties Anderson Silva for most title defenses in UFC history at ten. Uh, a lot of people talking about Demetrius Johnson and saying he could be the GOAT. Like Billy Goat? Yes. Like the Cubs? Possibly. Billy Goat Guff, the, the, the we bad broke luck the curse. Guy. 100 yeah. whatever years. Can we consider Demetrius Johnson the GOAT? What? No. <laughs> no, no disrespect to him. Why not? Listen, because he's fucking 12 years old and weight-wise. I, I know I know kids who weigh more than he does. And I, I, Sounds I know, greater. He, he could beat the shit out of me, I'm sure. But I'm saying, in the sport of MMA, these guys weigh 120, 130 pounds. They're tiny. We've met people this size. You know, John Dotson, we've, we've seen... I mean, well, even BJ Penn, BJ Penn met him in person. so small, and you know, no disrespect. These are these are giants, and they're and in, in their sport and their technical ability, but they are small, small individuals. How can you say that they're the greatest of all time at that weight? No way, it's impossible. I think there should be a cutoff, maybe like one fifty, nah, maybe even like one seventy and up. I mean, how can you say? Well, I think it. I think part of it is what. What's the definition of go? I have to look at, you know. I guess, yes. How many... Eats grass. People have you beaten? Milk, udders. How many years are you undefeated? <laughs> yes, yes, I get that. Quality but, of fighters? That, but that, do yeah. I want to watch you fight? That's part of the equation. Okay. If, if I don't want to watch you fight, you're out. Yeah. You're out. Puts butts in the seats. I mean, I would say Conor McGregor is more of a greatest of all time yeah. than, than freaking... Competition and that's face. I know, we're going to get some shit for this. <laughs> this is going to get... But it's also the, the point, coming. like, what have you done for the sport? Like, yeah. can you transcend the sport? Yeah. Like a Conor McGregor, like a Ronda Rousey. Because I think that's part of the equation for greatest of all time. Mm. I agree. Because in other sports, I mean, you look at... I always think, go back to Michael Jordan, because he was just a... He's one of the athletes, I think, it's hard to argue that he's not the greatest of his... But he had both. He had the charisma. He had he had the ability. He had the showmanship. Mm -hmm. He was crazy, highly competitive. Gambling problem. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Hookers. So hookers or whatever. Uh, you know, doing wacky stuff. Whereas Johnson just has a really good MMA record. I don't see him doing much of anything else other than that at this point. He's and streaming that, video games on Twitch. Yeah. And he also got the lowest ratings ever on the UFC on Fox. <laughs> so he's got that going for him. Yes, he does. So is he not the greatest of all time? No. He doesn't put You got to draw seats. people. You got to put asses in the seats. Yeah. You can't do that. And I don't want to watch you fight. You're out. I agree. End of discussion. Dunzo. Yes. Next. <laughs> Crazy conversation. Whoever said that, freaking idiot. A lot of people are seriously you guys are all debating. Stupid. It's, fuck, it's retarded. Blasphemy. What else we had? And then the, this past weekend, yeah, we had Cub Swanson in the unanimous decision. I can almost talk over Artem Lobo <laughs> yes. in a fight with a number four ranked guy versus a guy who's unranked to fight five rounds. <sighs> Why? Why are we making these matchups? Because there's nothing else to go. And with. how is that a main card, the main event? Well, it is not a, a paid one. It's free. I get it. So, but uh. they got to do something, man. They got to put butts in the seats. Uh, in the homes, and so that the television has something to show when that when the UFC comes on, there yes. must be something to show. I guess, and then that Todd Grisham and 
Uh, Brian Stan, the commentary. That may have been the worst <laughs> performance I've ever heard from two commentators. Was it slightly dry, Matt? Oh, my God. <laughs> Grisham was flavor? completely off his rocker. Stan doesn't know what to do with him. Stan is hes really good before or really good after, but the whole fight, just no enthusiasm. He's a robot. Yeah. Keep him one way or another. So we got that going. OSP got his second Von Flew choke. Nice. I think they only had three in UFC history. He owns two. Oh, wow. He must be good at that move. Mike Perry just about killed Jake Ellenberger with that short elbow. Yeah. Knocked him out dead. I was about to say that, yes. Then the last one, we had Al Iaquinta, uh, TKOing Diego Sanchez, hit him, clobbered him <laughs> with the right hand. Yes. Clobbers him with another right hand. Uh, after the fight, Iaquinta says, Hey, anybody selling a house, contact me. I'll be your real estate agent. So he's not real enthused with the UFC. And then afterwards, the UFC tweeted out, yeah, hey, here are the performance bonus not winners. Good. And Iaquinta tweets back, like, fuck you, UFC. Yeah. Like, oh, that's great. Here we go again. Well, the guy's super angry. You remember he had all this like, shit. like, I'm going to tear up another room. <laughs> yeah, he was he was blowing out hotel rooms. He's talked a bunch of mad shit on, on, on microphone in the stadium a couple fights ago. <laughs> yes. It was very salty. So. Yes. Well, he's only. I think he's only getting twenty six yeah. and twenty six. So I get it. And you could make an extra fifty if you got the bonus. But yeah, I think they give it to Swanson and Lobov. Whatever. But with I want to talk about Diego Sanchez specifically here because here's a guy. Yep. Uh, wants to go on a shield. And I can appreciate that. But what point do we just say that is enough? You yes. Need to stop. <laughs> Remember that? Like, yes. I, I get it, but <laughs> he's he's a man of like okay, chaos. He's, gonna he's be crazy. drooling into his fucking yeah, mashed he's, potatoes. He's already well past that. Year, he's, I think we crossed that line about three years ago. He's crazy. I think of out of I mean, I'm trying to think who took more damage than him in in the, in the last few years. I think nobody. He takes a, GSP he takes, in his last fight. I mean, yeah, I don't know, but he takes a lot of damage every fight, and that is not good for your dome. Bloodied up, cut up, beat up, yeah. just grueling through stuff. And I know he's got the Mexican thing going on. Those guys are, you know, the, the, not the stereotype, but that culture, they're freaking tough. Boxing, whatever. They're hard to knock out. They're hard. But at some point, you were right. You have to say, listen, <laughs> it's enough. You know, no more. You know, I mean, you're already crazy. How, how much more crazy are you going to get when your dome is all messed up? Sure. So Where is that point, though? Is that a... Is that a UFC decision? Is that yeah. an athletic uh, Both. commission? Is that uh, people that are training him, friends and family, all of the above? It's all of the above. And, you know, I thought that they were starting to spider out this testing that's been going around with the yeah. whole concussion and reaction time stuff. And I haven't really heard much about it since about six, eight months ago. So it seems like it, it, it kind of fizzled off. I wish that that guy is a prime candidate for something like that where they, they test you you know, after a knockout, how you're doing as far as these cognitive functions and reaction times. What if you just test perfect? <laughs> It'd be crazy, <laughs> you just, right? You I just know. let that guy keep going? He loses eight in a row, but as he's off the charts. He's get, yeah. actually getting smarter. <laughs> he's getting better. That'd he's be like awesome. the $6 million man Maybe now. Maybe he's got a special brain. And yes. Was it the woodpecker, I think, that has that? Yeah, like a super <laughs> dense skull. Like, yeah. he cannot be armed. No. Oh, cool, man. He's used to the impact. That's yeah. fine. So he's that actually good. makes him better. That's right. I don't know, but I, I, don't I, I feel bad. I, the next five, ten years are going to be interesting because there's going to be a slew. You've got, you know, Vanderlei Silva's Chuck Liddell. You got well, these you got some of them because uh, who is it? Gary Goodrich that yep. already has it, so Dementia. he's living proof. Yep, and CTE and everything else mm -hmm. going around. So time will tell, but yeah, he should just maybe take a long, long, long extended break. But then again, what if that's what he wants? That, like that's the debate I have where. Maybe mm. this is what he wants to do, and if he wants to just run into the ground, who are we to tell the man you got to stop? I mean, that's the other side of this debate. I, mean, I get it from that side too. Is he aware? That's the question. I don't know, because what, what if you're too far gone to make that decision? You know. Well, then somebody has to make it for you. Yeah. And you should err on the side of caution. I say let the man fight till he's retarded. Okay. Well, Maybe. we passed that point. But already. I want to be the man. To make my own decision. But what if I'm already gone? It's a hard debate, Ingo. Nobody knows the answer no. to that. Let's move along. Now. Please. What do you got? Well, in lighter news, I have Ronda Rousey and Travis Brown announcing their engagement. Surprise, surprise. Who knew? Um, do you think that they might have a baby on the way? 
<laughs> I thought they had a baby on the way before she had her s comeback fight. Remember how much she blew up yeah. when we saw those pictures of her trying to do uh, some video game work for EA yeah. UFC 2? We're like, whoa! Quite like pregnant. Uh, chunky. Um, yeah. It's interesting because there's been a lot of turmoil in, the, in their careers and whatnot, but maybe they're finding some solace in, in the combination of, you know. I hope that one works out. Imagine the killer they're going to raise. <laughs> yeah. Like that fucker, man or woman, is going to be some kind of killer. Yeah, Brown is highly athletic, very skilled technically. Ronda, highly athletic, very skilled technically, both in different aspects. What if they both raise the kid and continue to stay under Coach Edmund? What are the kids' chances Zero. of being successful? Zero. Failure to thrive, Matt. Oh, like I don't think they'll learn. I don't think they'll learn. I think they will continue to stick with Edmund. Well, maybe. You're 0 and 32. <laughs> maybe he has their souls. Do they keep the Rousey last name? No. I think, I think Travis will be Travis Rousey. <laughs> that would be something. That's going to be my best. A big old 6'7 Hawaiian dude <laughs> takes a little tiny little 140 pound girl. I'm just girl's saying. That would be something. I feel like he will. He might. Um, what else do I got? Oh, you're going to like this one. Frank mm. Mir suspended for two years. For what? Uh, because they said the kangaroo theory um, is implausible. <laughs> he said he ate some kangaroo or some shit, and that's why he tested positive for some stero anabolic agents. Well, they jacked him, and he was talking about it. Mm -hmm. He said... Uh, Did he have his glasses on? Did he seem all cerebral? I don't know. Oh, yeah. It says, it was initially thought that Mir passed a February 5th, 2016 drug test, but per USADA, new testing methods show that Mir they actually tested positive for DHCMT in that sample as well. And then Mir said this, he says, it is frustrating to now be told that USADA has changed their mind about the February 5th test, claiming that the sample they once cleared is, is now clouded with the same trace metabolite. Even more frustrating is that I've been told that the long-term metabolite could date back two years prior to implementation of USADA standards and possibly to a time when I had a legal exemption for testosterone replacement therapy. He did before, yes. So this sounds a little, or smells a little fishy. Uh, is this one of those things where USADA can actively push fighters out? Like a Frank Mir for some reason. I don't know if he had any beef with UFC. And then you look at a guy like John Jones where, oh, he's the you know, champion, so he comes back in. Oh, Chris Cyborg. Yes. Oh, well, we want her to be a champion. Therapeutic use exemption. Retroactive. Mm -hmm. Are they not just making up the rules for who they want? It appears to be so, Matt. Mm. I, I think that's been their MO from the start. You know, it, it, it always, depending on what suits them. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's a it money business. Like. Yeah, if they can grab money, they will. If they can't, they won't. If the UFC says, eh, then they, you know, back off. I don't know. Who, Frank Mir's done fighting anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, I think he should just do the jiu-jitsu competition. This is not going to stop him from doing that. So No. So he can do that all day. He'll be all good. Yes. And then I saw HBO did another update on <coughs> HBO Real Sports with the... Domestic violence in MMA. Mm -hmm. What a piece of horse shit. Did you have this skeleton looking dude? Doing the thing <laughs> they, well, they re-ran re the same exact story that they did before with a minor update. And then there, during the show, Bryant Gumbel had mentioned that Dana White had called called them out for not talking about boxing. And they, they said, oh, yeah, we've had uh, problems with boxing, you know. Um, there was Floyd Mayweather and Mike Tyson. And that's all they, that's all they said. There, like, there wasn't anybody else. But then they continue to mention, like, Anthony Rumble Johnson, uh, War Machine, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, what, all the other fighters. Like, really? Like, no other boxing people? This is the problem. Like, you can't mm. say you're an unbiased sport reporter or whatever you want to consider it. Sure. It was funded by boxing big time. Right. So why are they afraid to even discuss that topic? Huh? This is HBO, and they do what they want, when they want. Fuck it. <laughs> it's sad. It is. What else? World Series of Fighting. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sold, rebranded, renamed Professional Fighters League. So you have the investors group, which what? is the Riot Games founder. Okay. The owner of the Washington Wizards and Capitals is in this group. And then Ray Sefo is still in management He's as the president. Okay. So... 
here's what they said is going to happen. They said, the new league is open to all professional MMA fighters worldwide. Fighters will participate in one of seven weight classes and compete in regularly scheduled fights throughout the season. At the end of the regular season, fighters with the best records will advance to a win or go home postseason playoff tournament. Each tournament winner in the seven weight classes will be named the Professional Fighters League season champion and collect a $1 million cash prize. Whoa, that's a An lot of money. An additional $3 million will be shared between the other regular season and playoff competitors. Fighters <laughs> will also be getting a paycheck every month. Where are they getting this money from? Uh, I guess these guys are super loaded, but I'm going to ask, do you think this league's going to be successful? And you can give your opinion on whatever you think successful means. Well, to me, successful would mean that it's still around in a year or two and financially stable. I think right now in the beginning stages, that business model makes no damn sense. I like it, but I think they're going to have a hard time paying those kind of salaries. I, I know that there were several fighters who have talked to us before who said they really would like the idea of a regular salary. Yeah. I think it's great in theory, but I don't know that that works. I, I don't know that they can be... I mean, maybe the UFC, but... Yeah, I think it works in the UFC, but yeah. if you have another league and you don't put on... The only way this is going to work is you put on freak show matches yep. like a Ryzen. If you're not going to do that, you're not going to be successful. No. You see, all these you know, World Series of Fighting... I mean, it's UFC is probably 90% of the market. Maybe Bellator and Ryzen more. at the same, yep. like competing for a 3% share each. And then World Series of Fighting or this Professional Fighters League. So, yeah. I, you know, it's similar to the IFL when they were around. They, they started, I think, in 2006 and went out of business by 2008. So, they went with a team concept, salary, and health benefits. I just don't see how this is going to be successful. Seems like a, a cash burn to me. Maybe they're trying to bur uh, launder some money. <laughs> just trying to Possibly some dough. What? That'd be a good way to do yeah. it fast. I, yeah, you're gonna. That's ten mil right there, just in Gone. the first year, and not including all the other costs are going to be associated with. Oh, we only have ten people attending this high school. We're going to do it in high school. Mm -hmm. We're not going to sell any tickets because we don't care about tickets. Yeah. So. I don't know. We'll see how that one plays out. I got one more. What else? Kenny Florian versus Vitor Charlin. Kenny got choked out. It was a tournament Shocking. happening uh, via clock choke. Shocking. It was quite crafty. It was a great match. I think it was about three or four minutes long. Um, and Kenny very humble in defeat. <laughs> was he even conscious in defeat? He was not. But I'm saying uh, after when he came to again, Matt, not while he was uh, not. He was passed out. For a short and period. Shit, my pants. Well, they just choked. I gotcha. Those clock chokes suck because they happen so fast and they're so tight, so quickly. I'm sure he didn't even realize what was going to happen with the gi, especially. That that's that's a, it's not a good one. But I thought the match was 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 quite entertaining prior. So if you want to Google it, put it out there. I suggest you watch it. It's, ah, it's very satisfying to see him choke. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah. At least he's not on the commentating side anymore. He just does the. Whatever, UFC tonight or whatever. Yeah. He's good at those. Yes. So BJ Penn's back training with the Marinovich Zingo. Yes. I'm excited. Is this going to make a difference? Uh, I think he's, isn't he scheduled to fight Dennis Seaver? Again? If I remember. Is that happening? I thought, <laughs> I thought if I recollect. Okay. Is that a word? <laughs> uh, Will Ferrell. What? Okay. Um, I like it because the last, well, it's funny, it comes full circle. The last time he trained with them, he fought Diego Sanchez in probably for his best performance right. ever. Remember he split Diego's head freaking wide open? Yeah, the, the one <laughs> like, head kick the guy wants to throw crazy. ever. It's from the Lands fourth round. And, oh, yeah. I think they called a, that the goat vagina. Exactly. It was a brutal one-sided beating for four rounds. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, maybe BJ's, it's, I don't know, dude. I just don't know. Because, I mean, he went to Greg Jackson's and... Uh, we did not see a difference in his performance. He didn't have that upright style. I'm saying there was a difference. <laughs> That's he, what he, he had still prior. Lost. Now he's back <laughs> to his normal self. So, I don't know. It's probably for. Oh, well, he's uh, he's back in Hawaii though too. Yeah. So, hmm. We'll see how that one works out. Anderson Silva was talking about controversy at UFC 210 and the fight between Chris Weidman and Gager Musasi. No. He said, uh, well, looks like Weidman's luck ran out. 
What do you make of that statement? Salty. Anderson Silva. Salty. Still mad? Unnecessary. Still, still <laughs> angry. It's good, like, whatever. I mean, dude, for, but I think both fights, I think Anderson didn't win any minute of that of either of those fights. I mean, versus he Chris. losing. Chris Weidman, that yeah. is, yes. So I don't know why he's so salty. It wasn't like he was winning before he broke his leg against Weidman. No, he's getting his ass beat, just like he got his ass beat in the first fight. So it just happens, eh. I think he's salty. I, th I think he should just shut up. It it, it makes me want to not like him again because remember how we used to hate Anderson Silva? Yeah, I thought they should have <laughs> fired him way back in the day. We when I was running the UFC, gone! You are so yes. fired! We Come on! We hated him. We loathed his presence. Yeah. And then we became slight fans, I think, maybe both of us a little. Mm -hmm. And then that shit happened with his career ending pretty much, um, it's you know, as it is now. Yeah, and I think so. he turned down a fight against uh, Luke Rockhold. Smart move. <laughs> <laughs> no good's smart. gonna come very back. Very smart move, sir. You don't want that. Not so much. What else? Uh, speaking of statements, a bench Cohea says, "I could beat Holly Holm in a boxing match." <laughs> uh, I would say that is in work out. incorrect. Good sir. Well, I think MMA math <laughs> might work. So we had what Ronda Rousey mauls Bench Cohea with boxing. Yes. You have Holly Holm maul. Ronda, Ronda Rousey, Rousey with boxing, pretty much. Well, head kick, left yeah. head kick, murder. There's both. And now you're going to have Betch versus Holly. <sighs> How does the math work out? It doesn't seem to. I think Coach Edmund's going to win. <laughs> yeah. Into. All the way to the bank, making that money. Give me that paper, Matt. Something. Something, something. What else? Uh... Looks like UFC is going to make John Jones versus Daniel Cormier 2 at the end of the July. I like it. Unless Jones wants a warm up fight, then they're going to do Rumble versus Manoa, which, I mean, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, hmm. They said if they do Jones versus DC, that's going to be a co main. I don't Who's know. Who's going to be the main? Yeah, that's what I don't know. I don't know who the hell would Heavy be weights? the main. Unless, you, can you get Ronda Rousey to come out of retirement to do uh, Ronda Rousey versus Misha Tate free? Oh, geez. Both of them out of retirement. Yeah. One night only, special <laughs> rules. What is that? No ground. Titty twisting allowed. <laughs> mm -mm. No <laughs> tops, no ground. Uh. Misha Tate. There's some pictures out there. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. You Might want to look. <laughs> Might want to look. They're out there. Yes. Looks good. It's worth the price of admission. That's the funny thing. All the f photos that have ever been released, I have not been disappointed. They've all been pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, do you want to look at the light heavyweight rankings real quickly <laughs> while we're talking about DC, John Jones? Do I have a choice? Oh, my God. This is so crazy. So... You have John Jones isn't even in these rankings. So we have Daniel Cormier, who's the champion. You have Re Alexander Gustafson ranked one, Glover Teixeira Still? two, Jimmy Manua three, a Shogun at four, a Vulcan Ozdemir or whatever at five, Corey Anderson at six, Misha Sergeyev Sergeyev seven, OSP eight, Ir Latifi nine, Little Nog at ten. Patrick Cummings at 11, John Vellante 12, Tyson Pedro 13, John Blakovich 14, and Jared Cannonier at 15. What the fuck are we doing it's at 90, light heavyweight, man? 90% the people we have never heard of. Oh my god. Wow. It's like washed up people that have a name, some up and comers. Yeah, it looks and like then the some really old guys that, man, and obviously John Jones, but it, oof. it's not much challenge. Do we there. need to kill this division? <laughs> <laughs> they just get rid of light heavyweight. They could make a cruiserweight or something. What's a cruiserweight? Two fifteen? Two twenty maybe? Oh, I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's such a sad state of affairs. It is. I don't. It, it, is this the weakest division in the UFC? Might be. I think it is. Good I think it's weaker than heavyweight. Yeah, it's pretty weak. It's a lot of those guys are just eh, so so. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Ben Henderson 
losing his mind. He go tweeted this one out. It was just kind of out of character. He says, "I'm gonna fuck everybody up when I come back. You're all on notice." What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that as he retweeted it. Like, are you kidding me? What are we doing here? I thought he was a man of like, he's a godly man. He's pr good principles. He was loves everybody. I'm the son of Satan. So he's like, now he's, has he turned? <laughs> he might have. Might have found the devil. Okay, that happens. Um, yeah, it kind of seems totally random. Is there a beef? <laughs> is there a beef? I don't know. He's got a okay. beef with God. Jesus isn't helping him win fights anymore. He's well, losing. Maybe he's trying to teach him a lesson, Matt. And then I think the first reply to that is, what do you get, a split decision, everybody to death? You know? <laughs> like, I love fuck, it. man. Brutal. That's brutal, but true. It's very brutal. Got anything else for news wise? Uh, I got, I think, a couple more. You got anything else? Or? No, I think I'm out. That's good. We had uh, Derek Lose It. Here we go. Derek Lewis versus Mark Hunt announced. Oh, yeah. No point. Recipe for violence and nice poster. Hopefully, I will post that up there. We don't have it here. Uh, UFC 211 got a new poster. Remember that shitty mm -hmm. one they had with the white background? Thank so you. They kind of redid it and looks a little bit better now. If I can scroll. So it's the same concept, but we made the people bigger, not as much dead white space. Yeah, I like it way better. You can see their faces. It's it's nice and That's big. Right. The only thing I would have done different, I would have made their last <laughs> names bigger than their first names. So it's not Joanna, Stipe, Junior, Jessica. I like the last names yeah. bigger. First names are pretty common, especially with like Stepe, yeah, <laughs> Junior, <laughs> Joanna. That one's kind of more common than Jessica. Joanna, but that's not actually her real name. No, Joanna. It's like, Joanna. It's like Joanna something else. J check. They gotta go last name. I think that's cooler. Moving right along. Ass and nuts. Yes, my favorite part. All right. So I always have the CM Punk question. I like to get some CM Punk action. So, obviously, if you had Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk, that's pretty much a no contest, right? Brock Lesnar's going to win. Yes. What if we have Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk with a baseball bat? Then S who wins? Still Brock Lesnar. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Any day. I, I think CM Punk comes in hot. He just comes in hot. <laughs> no matter what. He probably skull fucks himself with a bat. Not even so far. It's like <laughs> towing, <laughs> like a cartoon moment. Oh, man. It'd be like a little dorm. I don't. Moment. I feel like that guy will never win. He'll never win a fucking. He's not gonna fight again. No, he is. He's still talking about his next fight, and I, I still don't know who he fights next. But Mickey Gall, running back. He should be on the main card for sure. Hundred percent. Ryan Smith asks: Anthony Johnson posted about knowing when fighters should call it quits. Should coaches and families step in for them and force them to retire, or should it strictly be on the fighters? Uh, I think it's got to be a combination of medical, advising of, of close trainers, friends, family, and then ultimately, what's 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 your goal as a fighter? I mean, I don't think it can be one thing. It's got to be a multiple things. You know, there has to be a medical reason. There yeah. Has, you know, I think you got to do. This. I think what it comes down to is the medical testing. You got to be able to do the. I think what you were talking about earlier, the cognitive testing, and see is this guy all right or is he not all right, and well, if he's all right. Then yeah, I don't give a fuck. Fight he's on! Lost Ten he's a fights in a row. He could have the woodpecker skull. <laughs> yeah. He's getting better. The more we beat him, the better he is. Brandon Mason asks, which former champion has a better chance of winning a belt, Jones or Junior Dos Santos? Oh, John Jones, hands down. Yeah, for sure. Junior Dos Santos, not looking. I mean, he looked better, but a little softer. Rodrigo Machado closes it out. Ooh, it's time. Pound sign, nuts rule. Pound sign, Matt Rape Train. Pound sign, Ingo Sugar Daddy. Would you rather have a 5 out of 10 blowjob from a 10 out of 10 woman or have a 10 out of 10 anal sex from a 5 out of 10 woman? Okay. Again, you need to be more specific. No, he is super are, specific. Are you pitching or catching? If you're getting... You're not taking it up the ass from the woman. Okay. So you're getting a blowjob, and it's the best blowjob ever, but the woman is a 5 out of 10. Oh, I thought I heard it the other way around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was the other <laughs> way. Now I'm really fucking it up. Okay. So you're getting a so-so blowjob like from a super hot chick. Um, or you're getting the best 
you're delivering the best anal sex ah. ever to a woman who's a five out of ten. That's a tough choice. <sighs> uh, I'm gonna say the first one. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards that because I'm. Even the worst blowjob blow is, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, not, no that <laughs> it's yeah. not that bad. It's not that bad. It's like pizza, you know, whatever. It's just sometimes it's good and sometimes it's great. And you can you can dirty up that pretty little face. That's all I'm gonna say. Would you rather be a nobody in a perfect world or be a really important person on, on a really bad world? <laughs> mm, I'd rather be a nobody in a perfect world. Sure. I don't need to be famous. Oh, I'm good with that. Would you rather die instantly or die slowly over the course of six months? Uh, is that even a question? Yeah. I, I think I've, that's I've, a good one. Throw me into a wall and f be done with it. Boom. I don't know. I don't know. Six months. It might be kind of fun to know you had six months left. Because that six months, you're going to get a lot of shit done. <laughs> yeah. You're like, fuck, I've got a six-month window to get everything I need to get done in my life. I think I'm gonna choose that route. Okay. I mean, instantly would be kind of cool because you yeah, don't have to drag over. shit out. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be six months of uh, bleeding out my asshole every day. You know. It's funny you go to that. This is uh, I gotta put a tampon up my ass every day to stop the leakage. I'm sure there's people who have to do that. Hey, God bless them. God bless them. Uh, every time, uh, every time a uh, ass bleeds, an angel gets its, its wings. Is that how it goes? I'm not very <laughs> religious. I thought it was bells. That was not, I thought that was the Christmas story. No, I don't not know. Christmas story. It was the <laughs> maybe confusing. Uh, uh, the one story with the thing. I blame about, Ben Henderson. Ingo. Black and white movie. It's a Wonderful Life. Not what's the other one you like, Doctor Strange Love. Yeah, is that black and white? Yes. Okay. It's very confusing. Mm. Fuck Mary Kill, the WWE edition number five. Number four. Right. We've got Nikki Bella. Incoming. I feel like this is a repeat. No? Uh, yeah. Might no. Be a repeat, but that's not bad. I'll take that. I like that. I uh, we got Paige. I think she was in like some porno that just got released. Some home porn. Oh, yeah? Well, she, she was pretty impressive. And Mickey James. A little oh. thick. A little manly in the face, though. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and kill this one. The other two, uh, we're going to... Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and Paige is gonna be the fuck one, and the first one will be the Mary Nikki Bella. She's got like a nice face and yeah, everything. I think this is the first time we're in agreement. We agree. This chick's dirty. She looks this dirty. This is like, but that's one and done. You don't want to marry that one. No, but you're gonna be hanging on for the ride. Hell yeah. It's, you might end up with some scars after that. <laughs> that last one is a little bit. It's, it's got the like the 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 HGH got going on. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's scary. I might be in for one night in Bangkok. We know how you are. Bangkok ready. The cyborgs. Bangkok ready. Are you? Knowledge, you got anything? I got drug a brief. Knowledge wise, uh, well, I got into a car accident. <laughs> yes. Uh, my knowledge would How'd be. How'd that work that, out? Well, it worked out fine. I got a rental. The car's in the shop. A lot of damage. About seven grand in damage. Did you get an electric car so we can go like 100 miles <laughs> oh, down straight in three seconds? That happened. <laughs> that, was that last year or the year before? I don't remember. I was like, dude, I got a rental. It's an electric car. Like, you got to right, drive let this me thing. Drive it's this. so Holy crazy. Fuck. I'm like, oh my God, you're going to kill us. <laughs> like, up the 80 down my street. Zero like, to 60 in three. Yeah. It was retarded. No, sick. it's got a regular car. But okay. uh, my, my point is, is that. Um, I feel like cars nowadays are very squishy, and I was not going super fast. My car is like totally, it's almost, it's damaged almost. Well, uh, maybe that's the, maybe they're going more with the, the crush factor to keep the occupants safe. Could be. Versus the old school ones. But I feel like the old school ones, you had the bumper and more, like, I feel like the weight and everything, you do more damage, like a fucking yeah. SUV smashing into something. Hmm. Yeah, the other car was American made, not much damage. Mine was a, my, mine was a. a well, did you have like plastic bumpers and all that? Yeah, Asian yeah. made car just exploded basically. <laughs> <laughs> but I was fine, so I mean, eh, yeah. maybe that was it's the trade off. No airbags. No airbag right? deployed. I was good. My point, my point being is, is please pay attention when you're driving because this has happened. Because did you I, put your dick back in your pants? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> hey, I was just whacking. Oh, like, like, come I'm, on, man! Come it's, on! It was like on Pornhub, just like, <laughs> <laughs> just like driving with no, my no, knees. No, I can't be caught with my no, dick in my hand and no. put away. Damn it! No, you caught me. You're not supposed to tell people about this. Shh. Anyways, be safe out there. That's right. It's a dirty world. <laughs>
<laughs> it is very <laughs> dirty. Uh, I got some knowledge, so uh, some credit to Front Row Brian on Twitter. He tweeted this out. He said, Ariana Celeste has a beer pong table. Out. Whoa. It's got her body scantily clad for the amazing price of $349. I think you can see a nipple on her right titty. What the fuck? Is that something we need in our lives? And it looks portable. There's a little handle there. Beer pong? Are you, uh, I think she had two versions, too. What? The beer pong table. Is there a naked version? There should be for three hundred and forty nine dollars. I should be seeing some folding box table. for fuck's sake. Twenty dollar folding table, five hundred bucks. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. That's what you got. Well, she also does personal video messages. I forgot what the cost was. I think it's down to one ninety nine. Okay, that might well, be. I swear. Even though you ask her to. Yeah. Oh. You could veto them. Is that worth getting? I think it's one forty nine. I'd rather have the Chris Cyborg one. I thought she was doing those, wasn't she? Uh, you had mentioned something before, I thought. No. Was it her that was saying you gotta do weird shit to make money as a female fighter? Was that Cyborg? Use your it body. would not surprise me. Use your body. You gotta use your body, man. Well, she's the one who told Angela McGanna yes. that you need to post naked pics on Twitter That's if you the want to be popular. That's, her. That's the only reason I follow that chick. Mm -hmm. She has a good point. All right. I mean... <laughs> The chick's got okay. an ass on her, and I won't quit. That's what it's all about. Is that about ass for days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. She's, she, well, she was the one that was tweeting out, does anybody know a good uh, gi, like jujitsu gi company, because my ass does not fit in my gi. And then she's showing a picture of her trying to get the gi over her thong-laden ass. Respect. Uh, huh. Respect. Respect, yeah. Uh, we got anything else, or? No, I think I'm good. I mean, it's been kind of a slowish week in MMA, sort of. And then next week, we're, we are doing a show, but it's going to come out on Tuesday. Yes. So Monday. So yes. We'll be there. We're going to tape on a Monday. Yeah. Got some shit going on. So, yeah, that's been this week's edition of MMA Nuts. Thank you for tuning in. It's short and sweet. Try it. In, out. In, in out, out, in, out. Bang, bang, boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good night. Thanks for playing.